So welcome to our celebration of our salvation this evening. I'd just like to invite you now, if for those who would wish, to join us by the Easter fire outside. Um, could I ask you that as you go through the gates, you go to your left, so that would mean you end up next to the priory and opposite the church. And as we process in, as the missal says, your candles will be lit after the second O Lumen. So don't worry if it hasn't been done yet. We'll do it when we, when we get to it. And, and you'll be here, so it means they won't blow out. So, and you can see your way in and everything. So, good, well, welcome.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities, festivities of unending splendour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and end, the Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him. And all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. 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 By his holy, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt now, all your heavenly choirs of angels. Exalt, all your wondrous spirits that surround God's throne. Let the trumpet ring out victory, sounding the triumph of this mighty King. Be glad to earn, since Christ has shone on you in all his brightness, enlightened by the radiance of the eternal King. Know that a whole world's darkness has been put to flight. Be jubilant to a mother church, arrayed in the brilliance of so great a light. Let these walls echo with the joyful song of all the people here. And you, who beloved, present at the lighting of this holy flame, I pray you join with me in invoking the loving kindness of Almighty God. May he, who not for any merit of mine has deigned to number me among his Levites, shed on me a ray of his brightness, helping me to sing this candle's fitting praise. The Lord be with you.
to ransom a servant, you delivered up your son. Oh, 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 truly necessary sin of Adam, blotted out by the death of Christ. Oh, 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 oh happy fault that merited such and so great a redeemer. Oh, oh truly blessed night, alone chosen to know the time and the hour in which Christ grows from the world below. The power of this night's sacraments puts crimes to flight, washes guilt away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. Hatred is driven forth, peace is fostered, and the pride of evil powers is humbled. On this gracious night, then, Holy Father, receive our evening sacrifice of grace, which early church, by the hands of her ministers, Render to you in the solemn offering of this wax the bees have made. Now we have rehearsed the meaning of this fiery pillar, lit in God's honor from the shining fire. And though this fire has been divided, it has suffered no dimming the sharing of its light. For it is fed by the melting wax which the mother bee brought forth to form the substance of this precious lamb. Truly blessed is the night on which earthly realities and heavenly Human things and divine are joined. Therefore we pray, O Lord, that this candle, hallowed in honour of your name, may continue bravely to dispel the darkness of this night. Accepted as a fragrant offering, May it mingle with the lights of heaven. May the morning star find its flame a light, that morning star which knows no setting, Christ your Son, who came back from the grave and shed his light serene upon mankind and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people, and in these the last days has sent His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this pastoral work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, 
God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry earth land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees, bearing fruit in which is in their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. <laughs> And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those who have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvellous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the people of Israel may go on dry ground through the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove, and the, Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on the right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down upon the host of the Egyptians and discomfited the host of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hands over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its wonted flow when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not so much as one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them, on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. 
And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendour even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. 
Whereof we pray that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. <clears throat> the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. <coughs> For this is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, I will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, <coughs> but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate your gates of carbuncles, and all your wall of precious stones. <coughs> all your sons shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your sons. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near you. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honour of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what you do is not bread, and labor for what you does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, and nations that you knew you shall not run to you, because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. <coughs> for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways are my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and return not thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
as I pour out my soul, how I would lead the rejoicing crowd into the house of God. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory.
Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a new spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to When the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb. And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Year after year, we need to hear again the story of betrayal and suffering, abandonment and death, and resurrection. A tale of a sudden turn to the good and a glorious ending, a you catastrophe, as J.R.R. Tolkien termed it. Again and again, each year, we need, we need to listen and to hear it proclaimed afresh until it becomes our personal story. As Rowan Williams says, we all need to read and listen again to the gospel until we grasp what it is Jesus has dismantled and done away with. So what has Jesus done away with? Well, death we say, but is this just something in the future? Something which, when we're younger, is just a vague notion, but which, as one contends with successive illnesses and the physical infirmities of age, comes ever more sharply into focus. And yet, as that Lenten antiphon so loved by St. Thomas Aquinas says, media vita morte sumus, in the midst of life, we are in death. For death, in fact, as we know, is a daily happening for us who are alive. It is happening around us in this world in which death is so much a part of our civilization and society that we barely react, whether the killing happens through the terror of unjust wars and repeated cycles of violence against groups of people or when a state enshrines as a constitutional right that which is ultimately the killing of an unborn child. Indeed, in this past Holy Week, certain parliamentarians in our own country have been advancing an amendment that aims to make abortion legal in this country for any reason and at any stage of a pregnancy. And just yesterday, on Good Friday, 
A prominent journalist bluntly argued that we just couldn't afford to keep the terminally ill alive. And so it is apparent we live in a culture of death, as Pope St. John Paul II coined it. And so death surrounds us, though we are in the midst of life. But death is not just all around us, it is happening within us and in our own lives, in our own flesh, as with each passing day, we move closer and closer to the end of this worldly existence. And Lent was meant, to, in some sense, to focus us on this dark reality as we're first marked with ashes, a reminder of our mortal physical destiny, and then through our penitential observances, we divest ourselves of, of those earthly things which we can't take into the grave anyway, until during Passion Tide, familiar things are veiled from our sight, for eventually, even our senses will fail us. The observance of Lent is thus and observation of death, an act of letting go, and we observe the acts of dying that we all must undergo, until at last we observe the crucified one. We behold that even the living one shall die for love of us. And seeing him lying prone upon his wooden throne, we kissed his holy cross, that is to say, we embrace his death. For by his dying, he has at last destroyed our death. Christ has dismantled the stranglehold of sin and done away with death's finality. St. Paul, therefore, declares that we, through our baptism, have died with Christ. And our old self, he says, was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed. But it's not as if the sacrament of baptism, in the instant that the water touches our brow, has stopped us and prevented us from ever sinning again, has it? At least, I'm sorry to say, that's not my experience. Perhaps it's yours. But so, St. Paul, speaking like this, seems to speak of baptism as an ongoing experience, such that in the midst of life, even now, we, the baptized, are in death. For we are in death if we die to our sins. We are in death if we mortify our lusts and our sinful passions. We are in death if we turn away from the destructive ways of our contemporary culture of death. For each of us, having been baptized, have been given the graces we need to be united with Jesus in a death like his. And what kind of death is this? Christ died out of his great love for humanity. Love and the salvation of mankind is the final cause of Christ's death on the cross. As such, love for God and also a genuine love for ourselves, and then love for the salvation of souls, beginning with our own, but also for each of our neighbors. This must motivate, then, our dying to sin, dying to our old habits, dying to all those sinful things which we still desire and want, as our Lenten struggle often reveals. And so year after year, we need to hear again the tale of new catastrophe, of God's grace saving you and me from death, saving us from ourselves and raising us to new life, that is, if we want to be saved and therefore be changed. For this is what salvation means, and this is what the life of the resurrection entails. A new me who shares the life of the risen Christ 
but this means a changed me. And not just change for one instant, nor because of the exciting music and beautiful decorations that raise our emotions on Easter night, but a daily and an ongoing renewed and changed me. For Christ desires to dismantle and do away with the old me who has been terrorized by sin. Thus Isaiah declared, in righteousness you shall be established. But for many, including myself oftentimes, this is just frightening and daunting. Nonetheless, this is what resurrection entails. This is what we celebrate, and this is what we spend the next 50 days of Easter, at least, focusing upon. A new life that is dead to sin, and the death of the old sinful me. Now apparently, the pious women who came to the tomb and found it empty, who were confronted with the awesome truth and astonishing reality of the resurrection, they too were overcome by this Easter realization. For the gospel passage we've just heard, coyly omits the next and the final verse of St. Mark's gospel, at least in what's called the shorter ending. It goes like this. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Full stop. But the story, of course, doesn't end there. It doesn't end there, because then it would be, for us all, personally, a catastrophe. Rather, although we see the fear and the weakness of the women, we know that God did not leave them in that state. His grace worked to strengthen them, evidently, and help them, because the fact that the Gospel of Mark exists at all, and the history of the Church since that day, and the fact that we are gathered here tonight, is altogether evidence that the women didn't ultimately keep the resurrection of Christ a secret. And so Mark's dramatic short ending is deliberately open-ended so that it may find an ending in your story, in my life and your life, in our times. The you catastrophe of our histories is still being written, for God's grace has yet to reveal all its surprising power in our personal lives. Hence, we need to hear and listen again, year after year, to the ways in which our God has saved his people from our foes. Our God who redeems us from our fears and who has acted definitively in the person of Jesus Christ. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. And so, my brothers and sisters, Alleluia is our song, as Pope St. John Paul II said. So let us, as an Easter people, learn to sing the new song, the song that declares that because of Christ's resurrection, death and sin have no more power over us, over me. Now we might falter at first, but by the third time, or perhaps even by the fifth time, because we did sing it five times tonight, that is to say though, ultimately, by the third time, together and with the Blessed Trinity, we shall courageously give voice to the new song, the Alleluia of a new life in Christ, as we're truly dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Like the women who came to the tomb at daybreak on the first day of the week, the eighth day of creation, we too, as a baptized people, as a church, stand daily on the cusp of God's new creation with the light of His grace at hand. 
Like the women, we too might wonder who will roll away the heavy stone of the tomb, that is to say, the burden of sin and the weight of our mortality and death. Who indeed shall save us from this mortal flesh with its burden of sin? Who shall save this world from its self-destructive course of action? St. Mark gives us one hint. And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. And this act of looking up, in biblical language, is a gesture of looking to God, a sign of divine activity at work. And indeed, it is God who alone can and will and did roll back the very large stone, just as God's grace would eventually loosen the lips of those frightened women, so that the gospel announced by the angelic white-robed man sitting in the tomb might be heard, a message that is heard even again on this night. Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Alleluia. Hence, our Christian story is, as Tolkien says, the greatest and most complete conceivable new catastrophe. This story begins and ends in joy. It has preeminently the inner consistency of reality, he says. There is no tale ever told that men would rather find was true, and none which so many skeptical men have accepted as true on its own merits. To reject it, said Tolkien, leads either to sadness or to wrath. Therefore, on this night, as the exalted declared, let both sadness and discord be dispelled by the bright reality of Christ's rising from the tomb. He is not here, not in the tomb of sin and decay, but he is to be found in Galilee, the place where the gospel was first preached and sent forth into the world to give to all who would hear it light and life. So let us seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek him in the preaching of the word of life. Seek him in the love and compassion we give to one another, especially to the most vulnerable, striving to protect the most vulnerable. And seek him through our own lives that is being changed by the grace of the risen Lord, such that we now live to God. And so, if in the midst of this life we have been in death, let us be found dying with Christ, so that today, because he is risen, we know and we proclaim that we shall also live with him. Alleluia. Indeed, Tertullian declared, have confidence, flesh and blood. Thanks to Christ, you have acquired a place in heaven and in the kingdom of God. Therefore, truly we are an Easter people who rejoice in this new day so that we can say, or even, if you know it, sing it with me. The Lord is truly risen, Alleluia. Alleluia. I think we can do better than that. Let's try it again. <laughs>
Dear brothers and sisters, <coughs> let us humbly beseech the Lord our Lord to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and clean our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And whilst alone, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan. You have renewed a corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. <coughs> Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
let us bring our needs and intentions before God, our loving Father. For the universal church, that in communion with the Pope and bishops, we may proclaim the saving event of Easter to all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all the nations of this world, that the kingdom of the risen Lord may sow its seeds in all societies and cultures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized this night, that freed from the slavery of sin, they may live the new life of the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who gather around the Easter flame, that we may share the joyous news of the resurrection with those we meet as we head out to our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who do not feel the light of Christ at this time, who are sick, bereaved, in grief, or in any special distress, that they may be touched by the Lord's power and healing work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they may return to life with him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we entrust to the Lord in the silence of this night our own particular prayers. And confident in his resurrection, we rejoice now with Our Lady as we sing.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask you, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. And together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. And the Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or we offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of, the, of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the um, final blessing, just to um, say you're very welcome if you're here for the first time. Um, veterans of these Easter vigils will know that traditionally Father Richard Conrad serves his world famous cocoa after mass in the Priory. So um, you're all very welcome if you're here for the first time. Do come in, we'd love to meet you. The Triduum is obviously a team effort, so there's many millions of people I'm sure I could thank. But um, a particular thank you to all the brethren who've worked so hard on the church, on the liturgy, and all the preparation that goes into the Triduum. Of course, our choir for your wonderful singing, and for everyone who made the church so beautiful and um, made this such a special few days. But while I'm thanking people, I'd also like to, to thank everyone who supports us throughout the year. It's not just the Triduum that's a team effort. The whole mission here at Blackfriars, in the hall, in the studium, in the research institutes, uh, in just the partial work that happens from the Priory. As brethren, we know very well that we couldn't do this without your support and without your help in so many different ways. So, thank you very much. I've certainly felt renewed by these Easter liturgies. I hope you feel renewed to continue our work together, preaching the Gospel here in Oxford, in the knowledge that what we do in this wonderful and unique city trickles out to the rest of our country, and indeed beyond these shores, to the rest of the world. And I pray that our work here at Blackfriars will be strengthened in the power of the resurrection in everything that we do. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. My, may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion are drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Just before I give the last blessing, Father Bruno reminded me to remind you that May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.